Welcome to Bag End. I'm your wackadoo host, Momo Baggins, and the cat is out of the bag, Otto Hightower, you sneaky <laughs> Pack your things and get the hell out of here. Put him in a bed for us. House of the Dragon episode 4 aired on Sunday, and there is a lot to unpack here, friends. The episode explores the psyche of a few different characters, and throughout this video, we're going to be going over some big plot developments, some ties to the source material, fire and blood, and everything you need to know about the show. Let's hear it for Viserys for finally showing some balls this episode, no pun intended, and smash that little like button and also make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll be breaking down the show every week. Huge thanks for clicking the video guys, as a growing channel your support truly does mean everything. Now let's get into my breakdown of House of the Dragon episode 4. Now the episode opens with a view of Rhaenyra's Valyrian necklace that was of course gifted to her by her uncle Damon back in episode 1. It's an important shot as this episode takes focus on their relationship and how Uncle D will eventually try and put Uncle D's D in Rhaenyra's V. Ha <laughs> Damon will eventually ask Viserys for her hand in marriage and this comes off the heels of Rhaenyra being unable to choose a suitor in this scene where she essentially plays the bachelorette and ain't nobody getting no roses. She makes fun of an old guy from House Dondarrion for being too old. Yes, the same Dondarrion as Beric from Game of Thrones. An ancestor, to be sure. A young kid from House Blackwood, who eventually takes it to the guy from House Bracken who was heckling him. This is a cool shout out, by the way, to the books, as those two houses actually have a long-lasting blood feud between them. The scene takes place in the hall of a Baratheon, as we see him seated next to Rhaenyra, hosting the event and donning the sigil of the stag. So Rhaenyra sees the event as a bit of a show, and walks out on it, and then we see her on the ship back to King's Landing. They're interrupted, and some of the ship's crew poops their pants a little bit as Daemon swoops down on Caraxes. He shows up, walks into the hall with a fresh cut, and there's drama here because he was crowned the King of the Stepstones, and that's clearly a no-no in the Seven Kingdoms, as there's only room for one king. When he walks through the court and approaches the king wearing a crown, he's met with a whole bunch of... Hey! Oh, 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 hey! Copernicus! In the book, Fire and Blood, Corlys Valerion offers to name Daemon the King of the Stepstones, which was a big reason why he was so interested in joining the war. The book mostly mentions Daemon winning a bunch of battles, including, of course, killing the crab feeder, but ultimately he did not care much for ruling over some rocky beaches with burnt corpses on them. This is one of the many reasons why he eventually hands his crown over to Viserys and bends the knee. He wants to gain his favor again as well. Damon is accepted by his brother the king, and he thanks him for taking out the crab feeder, and the two embrace as the crowd cheers. Next scene they're in the garden and Viserys seems to be feeling himself, and my guy is out here cracking jokes for once. Perhaps Prince Damon would care for a tour of the gallery. Would you like to see the tapestry? <laughs> little plot detail from the book, it's actually said there that Viserys is always able to forgive Daemon because he shares a lot of fond memories of them as kids together. But next we see Allison and Rhaenyra discussing boys, and the two seem to want to switch places at times. Allison wishes she could be in Rhaenyra's shoes and be able to choose whichever lord she wanted, which Rhaenyra clearly wants to be free of the shackles of tradition. Rhaenyra and Daemon have a chat near the Weirwood tree, and we learn another year has passed since last episode, as he says, You've matured yourself these last four years, princess. Following up on that scene, we see the small council in session, and it looks like Rhaenyra has finally gotten a seat at the table. The council is talking about the issue that Chorus Valerion is discussing a pact with the Free Cities by wedding his daughter to one of the highborn lords out there, and that would pose a big issue to Westeros if the largest navy teamed up with the Free Cities. This of course involves Rhaenyra as the solution to their issues, because it brings up the idea of her wedding Laenor Valerion again. She's tired of the matchmaking game, and as we could see her in her room later that night, she finds a map with some directions, 
and the adventurer in her naturally follows it. And the two, dressed in common-born clothes, take in the town. It's important for them to hide their hair here, as bleach blonde, almost white hair of the Targaryens, was very distinctive in this time. We then cut to see Viserys in the bath, covered in wounds, as unfortunately my guy's health condition just keeps getting worse and worse. There are theories that it could have been grayscale, like what Ser Jorah had in Game of Thrones, but that disease progresses way, way, way faster than what we're seeing here, so that's definitely not it. It's most likely infections caused by cuts he's received from sitting on the Iron Throne, it was said in the books that only true kings could sit on the throne without cutting themselves, and any who received wounds from it were cursed by it. So Rhaenyra and Daemon walk through the streets of King's Landing, and we see the common folk living out some citywide party of smashing in public, drinking, yelling, and just general debauchery. And I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't help but think of Tyrion's speech as I watched this part. I saved you. I saved this city and all your worthless lives. We then see some street performers putting on a play as they discuss the succession of King Viserys. Rhaenyra is mostly unfazed by them making a joke of her claim to the throne, and she is reminded by Daemon that their opinion actually matters. Next we get to the start of when the episode takes a turn towards a softcore porno in true Game of Thrones fashion. Daemon takes Rhaenyra to a brothel, now in this scene, we see Damon and Rhaenyra about to get it on like Donkey Kong, but Damon can't get it up, and he eventually just walks away, leaving Rhaenyra as horny as you would expect, which might have led to her to be foolish in her return to the Red Keep and not cover her hair. Some little twerp sees her, and the rumor spreads throughout the kingdom. The rumors would be wrong, of course, because the real deed was done by Sir Kristen Cole. My guy is conflicted as Rhaenyra comes on to him because this could get him into some serious trouble, and most likely killed. Naturally, the little head prevails, as it always seems to do, and he decides to take her to bed. So next we see Otto Hightower receive word about this rumor from someone described as the White Worm. And this is actually Missaria, as we later see her waking Damon up. She's building up a network in King's Landing, and I'm not sure what her plan is, but she's clearly up to something. Otto looks to be this show's little finger, and Missaria might be shaping up to be the show's Varys. Definitely curious to see how that plays out. So these rumors cause a lot of shade to be thrown Rhaenyra's way, and we see a scene of Allison confronting her by the Weirwood tree. This certainly isn't the duo we saw laying together in episode 1, and I think it's just further demonstration that the two are having very different belief systems right now. Allison is slowly losing her shit and hating the Targaryens, as she's forced to have sex with Viserys and his Loose skin and old balls? Gross! Just to make more heirs, she really feels helpless right now. She's sickened of the thought of incest, and Rhaenyra completely denies the rumor, which she's not technically lying because her and Damon didn't actually make love. Next we see Damon get dragged into the throne room with a bad hangover, and Viserys kicks the crap out of him and threatens his life. Damon, the sick bastard that he is, actually lies and tells Viserys he did sleep with her. He wants to anger Viserys and feel like he has more power over his brother. Now, to finish things up, there are two scenes I'd like to talk about. The first being the scene where Viserys shows Rhaenyra the dagger. We've seen this dagger on Viserys' waistband throughout the show, and it's the same dagger that will eventually appear in Game of Thrones and ultimately kill the Night King. He tells us of how there was a message inscribed on it when it was made, and Rhaenyra reads it to be about the prince who was promised and the tie-in with the Song of Ice and Fire. I really like how they're tying in the overarching plotline of Game of Thrones into this, and hopefully it will continue to provide more depth into what ultimately ended up being a weak conclusion to the Night King. And the last scene we'll touch on is the scene where Viserys shows his big old balls and finally calls Otto out on being a scheming bastard. He displaces him as Hand of the King, which is actually pretty wild because Otto has been Hand of the King for a very long time. And this will most definitely act as a catalyst to push him further into his scheme of putting Aegon on the throne. Moving forward, I expect Otto to be incremental in the cause of the eventual civil war we'll see. If only his mother had drunken that Plan B or Plan T that's given to Rhaenyra in the last scene of the episode. 
So what are my thoughts? Well, I think this episode did a lot to explore what makes some of these characters start to turn into what they'll become. Rhaenyra lusting for independence, Alicent losing her mind a bit, Damon continuing to be the lesser known and respected brother, and Otto being given a reason to really sow the seeds of war. It wasn't the most exciting episode yet, of course, but still a good one to set up plot for future episodes. Ness and I give this a half a milk bone and we're drooling for more content. As always, thanks for joining guys. I hope the videos entertain you and keep you informed. Make sure to check out some of my other content as well. Bag End is only just getting started. Much love and Baggins out.